Welcome back to Q13 News. We've all read the diary of Anne Frank. We did it in school, probably own a copy. We feel like we know Anne and her sister Margot, but, but do we really? Probably not. I mean, there's this new exhibit in Seattle that aims to reveal the real Franks in, in, in new ways. And one of the people who's actually seen this exhibit is Holocaust survivor um, herself, Laureen Nussbaum. And you were actually a childhood friend of Margot, but also of Anne, yeah. who was kind of the annoying little sister, is what it sounds yeah, like to me. A little bit, yeah. So t tell me what that was like, how you met the family and how you became friends with them. Well, the Frank family and my family, the Kleins, we are from Frankfurt. And the Franks came to Amsterdam in 19, late 1933, and we got there in 1936. So I'm pretty sure that my father asked Mr. Frank for all kinds of useful advice. How to be a local, basically. Yeah, yeah. well, how to set up business and how to get started again. Yeah, yeah. right. You so you yourself have this remarkable story of survival. I mean, I was looking at some of the photos that you sent, and, and you, know, you, you were one of just a few people in your, your class oh, yeah. that survived the yeah. Holocaust. Yeah. When you hear that people today don't even know what Auschwitz is, there's like a survey that's two-thirds of millennials don't even know, can't yeah. identify Auschwitz. Yeah. That has got to like hurt in a way that is just difficult to explain. Yeah, it, it is. On the other hand, there are so many terrible things happening now again that uh, I guess I, that's an excuse. People are absorbed in what's happening now in the world. Why do you think we should continue to teach about the Holocaust? Well, I always used to think in order to avoid it, uh, that it would have not happen again. But seeing what's happening in, in the Middle East and uh, in Africa, I'm kind of uh, desperate about it. Yeah, so talking about what is happening today while remembering at the same time that what we have done. That would be the way, that yeah. would absolutely be the way. So I want to return to your relationship with um, the Franks. You, you, you say you were friends with Margot. Well, Marco and my older sister and I went to religious education together. Okay. And my younger sister and Anne were too young. So they, they, they were not <laughs> part of that. I like it. What, when, when we look, here's a photo of you in school and a, a picture of Anne. Or last week, we, we heard about these two pages that were long, sort of secret in the diary, and everyone was interested to know what they were, and they were just dirty jokes and... And her idea about sex education. Well, are you surprised that that's what was behind those pages? No. Not, well, I, I didn't really know and I didn't really care <laughs> I, I, because I think it should not, it should not have been uh, made public. Why not? Because I think an author has a right to uh, keep things away. Just think now we write on a computer and if we don't like it, we throw it away. Right. And nobody uh, gets to see it. I think it's the right of the author to decide what should be and what should not be read by them. And there's kind of been a long controversial history when it comes to her dad and what should have been, shouldn't have been published. He took liberties, yes. And but, you actually know Mr. Frog. Oh yes, he was the best man at our wedding. We have a photo, I think, of yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, what, what do we get wrong? We think we have sort of this public ownership of the story and we know Anne and her sister so well. You actually knew them. What do we not know about them? Well, what, what, what you don't know is something that I rather as a scholar uh, worked on that was the, the intentions of Anne, what she wanted to publish. There is an A version and a B version of her diary, and the B version is what she wanted to publish. And we haven't seen that yet, except in the very big, fat, critical edition. Otherwise, people don't know what Anne wanted to publish. Why do you think we haven't seen that? Is it because of her father? No, it's because of copyrights. Ah, <laughs> yes, which has been a huge battle oh, for yes, decades. Yes, 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 yes. Do you think we will ever see the B version? Well, apparently the Anne Frank House in Amsterdam right now is working on, a electron, on an electronic uh, B version, yes, mercifully. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, I want to ask you one quick thing. When you see the plays, for example, what do they get wrong? I, I know you were talking to MJ, for example, about the scene of Anne laying on the floor and writing the diary, and you were like... That's a no-no. Why not? <laughs> we wouldn't have thought of lying on the floor while we were writing. We sat at a table. Yeah, that was just, uh, so that's us Americans just screwing American. up the play. It, it doesn't fit if you think how formal people are in the diary. They speak of Mr. Van Dan, Mrs. Van Dan. It, it, I mean, it would have been so sloppy, you wouldn't think of it. Yeah. So fascinating to talk to you. I know you're writing a book, so I want to have you back when the book is published. I, I thank you very much for being here um, and, and, and talking about your friends with us. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, in the meantime, uh, if you want to go to the exhibit, Let Me Be Myself, The Life and Story of Anne Frank, Holocaust Center for Humanity, um, that is uh, on 2nd Avenue. It runs until the 30th, Wednesdays and Sundays, and of course it's $10.
uh, general admission. And MJ, you said that uh, Seattle Children's Theater actually going to be doing the Diary of Anne Frank next spring. Yes, the Diary of Anne Frank at the Children's Theater uh, 2019 next year, April and May. And both at, uh, Travis played Otto Frank in high school and I played Anne in high school. So I can't wait to see the play again at Seattle Children's Theater next year. Awesome. Thank you for coming in, Lorraine. That was awesome.